Hey, this is Tom again, and we're back. If you are a music producer, and if you're considering or thinking about making music for film, how would that work? What would you have to do? What are the things you should keep in mind? Well, obviously, I come from the electronic music world, and I built my career in the late 80s, early 90s, all the way up to 2012, when I did my last show. And since 2010, I've been fully working in the film industry. Obviously, I have to say that when I made my transition into film music, the music industry and also the film industry was different, you know, at the time. It's more snappy, it's more modern, and also we have way more content that is being created, not only for theaters, but for all the streaming platforms. And they are very much in desperate need of very talented musicians, film composers, music producers to come up with music for these media forums. And a very th interesting thing I want to point out is that film music is not music. Film music is music that is made with a single purpose to live in a film or a TV show. Music, on the other hand, is made because an artist has like a creative uh, flow and he needs or she needs to get that out of her or his system to create something and just give it to the world or sell it uh, to the world. Usually I would say the best music to listen to is real music and it's not film music or uh, music for a TV show because that is like a watered down version of real, awesome music that lives in the outside world. And that goes for orchestral music, electronic music, any type of music. And the cool thing with my career uh, is that I was an artist first, and then I moved into uh, film scoring because they wanted uh, a composer that had like an artist's integrity about um, making music and, and how to create that for film. Obviously, I needed to learn a lot and that's, Tip number one, uh, I would say, is you need to be aware of like what is happening with music in a film or in a TV show. It's a very good thing to analyze. And then you can, for instance, think, is what I'm doing, is there a version of my music that I'm doing maybe suitable for a TV show like this or a movie like this? It makes you think about how to do this. Like for instance, if you're an electronic music producer and you're making really aggressive breakbeat music, which is probably great for a few segments in a movie or a few segments in a TV show, but not the whole way through because there are conversations, there may be people dying, uh, there might be uh, a church uh, scene happening, whatever. So there needs to be a version of your music that can fit different sections of a film or a TV show to underscore those type of emotions. So that's a good thing to look at. The second is emotions themselves. Like a film score or a TV show score goes through various different types of emotions. And what is your musical answer to that? What that is within the music that you, uh, that you make. You could be, for instance, um, a rock band and you want to get into TV show uh, music, then obviously you have maybe songs that are really upbeat and very aggressive, but maybe you also have some sound uh, songs that are more spun out and they're more ambient in nature that could function somewhere else in a film or a TV show. So that is a good thing to figure that out uh, for yourself. And fourth is now to make imaginary showreels. What is a really good tip actually is that you come up with a title for an EP uh, with four songs or five songs on there. And you give it like a, an imaginary title of a TV show that is actually never being made. And on this EP, you showcase with your band, with your electronic production skills, um, with your singer-songwriter duo, it doesn't really matter what music style you're coming from. It's like you feature like five uh, pieces of music that have clearly the identity of you as an artist or a music producer, but at the same time, it has various different atmospheres and various different emotions. 
and that you want to make known to the world and you want to make sure that whatever social media you're running or whatever website uh, you might have, you gear towards promoting yourself in that industry and trying to see if you can get in touch with those, uh, sadly to say, only a few people that deal with this. It's maybe a group of 25 to 50 people around the whole world that have decision-taking power on who is gonna make music for what. And sometimes it helps uh, to reach out to your local uh, film academy and see if you can get in touch with young film directors that are studying on an academy. And maybe it is possible for you to make some music for their uh, projects that they're working on while still in school. And you can develop a relationship like that. And if that young director is now, after finishing his film school, is gonna do his first little projects, you know, he already has a composer in mind, which is you, because you have been working uh, with him closely on that. So these are some tips that you can, you can try to figure out for yourselves. And then on top of that, there are all kinds of seminars being organized uh, around the world locally where you can just go to, for instance, in Amsterdam, there's the Amsterdam dance event. There are events like that in LA. There are events like that in New York, uh, in London. Uh, there's one in Vienna that I'm aware of. It's kind of a symposium where young people go to that need information about how do I get into this industry and how can I make my first steps. There will be people there that come from this uh, industry and that's how you start creating a network. There's also online versions of all that and you can become a member of an online community like that and share information with one another. What is one thing that is 100% for sure is that in the past when I moved into film scoring. There were only a few jobs and there were too many people that wanted to do those few jobs. So you really had to struggle to get yourself heard and to get yourself known. It's almost the reverse right now. There's so many music related contents being needed for all these streaming devices, for all these movies that are coming out, that it is so much easier right now to come into contact with a person that might need your uh, services. And by doing a lot of thinking on forehand, how you can attack this, looking at your own music style, you could come really well prepared and you might actually be surprised what is gonna happen for you. So if you have any more questions about this subject, I know I talked about this subject uh, quite a lot in previous videos and also in masterclasses that I give, but it's still somewhat a little foggy, like how do you make the transition from one to another? It's not like a 10 step program. I even sometimes wonder myself, why did I end up where I ended up? And it, there, a lot of it is luck. A lot of it is knowing the right people at the right time. A lot of it is like stepping outside of your front door at the right time. So you bump into a person and that's how a contact is made. I mean, the stupidest thing that I can come up with have sometimes helped in my career getting a step uh, closer to where I wanted to be. Any questions regarding this, please leave them below. And I'll see you soon on another segment.